I am discussing about module learning method approach. Right now, till now, you know what we have done? We have discussed about relevance theory. Right? We have discussed about relevance theory, and we have seen there are two theories under relevance theory. First is net income approach. And second is traditional method, right? Both methods we have discussed in detail. Then afterwards we have started irrelevance theory. Afterward, what we have done, we have started irrelevance theory. Now what irrelevance theory says, irrelevance theory says that capital structure decision making is irrelevant. And it includes uh, two theories. One is net operating income approach. And second is Mod Gilani Miller approach, right? Now, what I have to do, I have to start Mod Gilani Miller approach right now. I have to start Mod Gilani Miller approach right now, right? And it is a part of irrelevance theory. Now, what Mod Gilani Miller approach talks about, that right? you have to listen to me very carefully, automatically, you will understand each and everything, right? Mod Gilani Miller approach says that. Capital structure decision making is irrelevant, right? Capital structure decision making. CSD means capital structure decision making is irrelevant, right? Now, this uh, irrelevance theory includes two components, right? First component is net operating income approach, right? And second is Mod Gilani Miller approach. But you know, in net operating income approach, we have seen that it does not provide much clarity. That we have seen that it does not provide much clarity, right? In this method, we have seen there is one formula that is EBIT divided by KO, that is weighted average cost of capital. And we were calculating some amount, right? But there is no such clarity in case of net operating income approach, right? It looks very similar to net income approach, which is given in relevance theory, right? That is the reason one more theory came into picture that is Motkalani Miller approach. And it gives detail. Uh, idea about irrelevance of capital structure. That's why capital structure decision making is irrelevant, right? Now, generally, what Modgilani Miller says that value of levered firm is always going to be equivalent to value of earned levered firm. Now, so what is the meaning of levered firm? Levered firm means which includes debt and equity both, right? The company or the firm, which includes debt and equity component both, right? Levered means leverage, right? And leverage means the company which takes a uh, debt. Na, that company would be considered as a levered firm, right? What is the meaning of unlevered firm? The company which has not raised any money by taking debt or by issuing debt securities, right? So unlevered firm are those firms which has raised money by only issuing equity capital, right? Now here, what I will be doing, I will be showing you a pie chart, right? So you will be getting more clarity with the help of pie chart, right? Now, if you see here, there's a company, right? There is a company who has taken some loan and who has issued some equity shares, right? Who has issued some equity shares, right? Now, how their capital structure will look like here, if I draw a structure, so you will be getting more clarity, right? Here, company has taken some debt, and some equity. Let's suppose that portion is lesser as compared to equity proportion, right? And there is a company who has raised only equity, right? There's a company who has raised only equity. Here, Modgilani Miller approach says that the value of firm is always going to be same. In both the cases, the value of firm is always going to be same, right? There is no relevance of capital structure, right? So one should not focus on uh, doing capital structure decision making, right? I can take another example, which will be giving you more clarity, right? Now, there are two types of firms, right? There is one firm who has taken debt and equity both. And there is another firm, again, that firm has taken debt and equity both, right? That firm has included debt and equity both in their capital structure, right? Now, I will be showing you their structure wise, right? I will be showing you their structure that how they have raised uh, debt and equity into the firm. Here we will see the proportion of debt and equity. And here again, we will see the proportion of debt and equity, right? So there is a firm which has taken small amount of loan, right? There's a firm which has taken small amount of loan and a big amount of equity, right? And there's a firm which has taken a huge amount of loan and small amount of equity funds, right? In this case also, the value of equity, uh, the value of firm will remain same, right? So 
Modkelani Miller approach says that it is irrelevant uh, to focus on capital structure decision making. Right, in all the cases, your value of firm is going to be same. Right, and they have given Modkelani Miller has given uh, arbitrage theory. Right, Modkelani Miller has given arbitrage theory, which I will be discussing in detail right now with you. That what is arbitrage theory? Right. Now here, what I will be doing, I will be framing an example. So automatically, you will be able to understand that what I'm trying to explain. Right. So let's suppose I'm framing an example here and we will solve this case, right? Now let's suppose there are two companies. I'm taking example of Infosys, right? Infosys is an IT company and mostly it is a debt-free company, right? So I'm taking example of Infosys and I'm taking example of Adani, right? Infosys and Adani, example I'm taking here, right? Now, if I take talk about Infosys, right? So Infosys, is a debt free company infosys is a debt free company it means it is a unlevered firm right and if i talk about adani adani includes debt into their capital structure right adani includes debt into their capital structure right they includes that into their capital structure and it is a levered firm, right? Now you have to make assumption that both the companies, they are making same kind of profit, right? Both the companies, they are making same kind of profit, right? And now I will be making some assumptions. So automatically you will be able to understand each and everything, right? Now here, here, what assumption I'm making that Adani has borrowed a debt of 1 lakh crore, right? I'm assuming that Adani has borrowed debt of 1 lakh crore rupees for which Adani has to pay 7% interest, right? Adani has borrowed debt of 1 lakh crore rupees for which Adani has to pay 7% interest, right? Now, if I talk about EBIT, so EBIT of both the company is, let us assume, uh, we are assuming EBIT of both the company is 20,000 rupees. Uh, I should assume that EBIT of both the company is how much? It is 20,000 rupees, right? Now further, I will be taking few more examples. So you should get the clarity about it, right? For that, Adani has to pay interest. How much? For that, Adani has to pay 7% interest. Here I have already mentioned the thing, right? Again, I'm writing it down. So you will be able to understand uh, properly. Huh? Now here, if I talk about cost of equity, right? If I talk about cost of equity, so let's suppose cost of equity is 12%, right? How much is the cost of equity? Cost of equity is 12%. Now, if I ask you to calculate the value of one, how we can calculate the value of firm. That is the most important thing which we have to calculate and which we have to uh, understand that how it will work in real world. Right? We have to calculate the value of equity. Right? Now, if you see here, let's suppose what I'm doing, I'm assuming chalo, cost of equity is 12%. Instead of 12%, I will take 10%. So we will be getting uh, accurate result. Right? Uh, we won't be getting the result in uh, decimals. Now, if I prepare the income statement chart for Infosys. If I prepare the income statement chart for Infosys, right? Now, if you see here, Infosys is a debt-free company, right? So here, what is going to be the EBIT? EBIT is common for both the companies. Here, EBIT is going to be 20,000, right? How much interest uh, Infosys has to pay? Interest is going to be 7,000, yes or no? One lakh uh, is the debt amount. So 7% of one lakh is going to be how much? It is going to be 7,000 rupees, right? So here, if you see what is going to be the EBT here, EBT is going to be 13,000, right? What is going to be the EBT here? EBT is given here 7, 13,000, right? Now, if I want to calculate the value of firm, here value of firm and value of equity is going to be safe, right? Because company is having only equity into their capital structure. Company is having only equity into their capital structure. So what I will be doing, if I want to calculate value of firm or value of equity, so here we will be using the formula that is going to be EBT divided by KE, right? That is cost of equity. So here 13,000 is the, uh, no, but why I'm taking interest here, right? I should not take the interest amount because it is a unlevered company. So let us assume this data is given for uh, Adani. Let us assume this data is given for Adani. I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. This data is given for Adani because Adani is a levered firm. That's the reason Adani has to pay the interest. That's the reason Adani has to pay the interest here, right? 
So what is going to be the uh, value of equity here? The value of equity is going to be how much? The value of equity is going to be here. 1 lakh 30,000, right? How? 13,000 and cost of equity is 10%. So here value of equity is going to be how much? It is going to be 1 lakh 30,000. This is the value of equity. Now what is going to be the value of debt? Value of debt is 1 lakh rupees. We know that company has borrowed debt of 1 lakh rupees. So here we will be taking value of debt. That is 1 lakh. Now, if I do the total here, so what is the value of firm here? The value of firm is 2 lakh 30,000 rupees. Value of firm is how much here? It is 2 lakh 30,000. Now, if I calculate the same thing for Infosys, if I calculate the same thing for Infosys, so Infosys is an unlevered firm, right? Infosys is an unlevered firm. And here, EBIT is given, let's suppose, 20,000. EBIT is given here 20,000 rupees. Company won't be paying any interest. So here, interest is going to be zero. Right. So what is going to be the EBT in this case? EBT is going to be 20,000 rupees. Right. EBT is going to be how much here? It is going to be 20,000 rupees. Now, if you want to calculate value of equity or value of firm, so what formula we have to use? The formula is going to be same. That is going to be EBT divided by KE. Right. EBT divided by KE. Here we have to do EBT divided by KE. It is going to be how much? It is going to be 20,000. Uh, divided by 10%. So what is going to be the value of firm or value of equity? It is going to be 2 lakh rupees, right? What is going to be the value of firm? Okay, the value of firm is going to be 2 lakh rupees, right? Hopefully you are able to understand the value of firm for Adani and value of firm for Infosys, right? So here we can see the company which has borrowed debt, right? The company which has borrowed debt, their valuation is higher. Right, their valuation is higher, and this concept we have already learned. Right, this concept what we have done, we have already learned. Right now, now you know here what Modgalani Miller approach says that capital structure decision making is irrelevant. Right now, if you will see this data, now if you will only see this data, so you will say that company should borrow the debt. Right, you will say that company should borrow the debt just because of uh, that the valuation of company is higher. Right here, Adani is getting more valuation. Right now, what we have to do we have to apply the arbitrage process, right? Now, uh, Modgilani Miller says that just because of arbitrage, you know, the value of highest uh, firm, right? The company who received highest value, uh, later on, you know, just because of arbitrage, the value of that firm will reduce. Now, what is the meaning of arbitrage? We have to understand this concept here, that what is actually arbitrage, right? And how does it work in the market, right? Now, you know, what is the meaning of arbitrage? Arbitrage means uh, if, let's suppose you have invested into a levered company, right? Right now, what you have done, you have invested into a levered company, right? Now, there will be a risk in your mind, right? You will carry a risk in your mind. Why you will carry a risk in your mind? Because you will feel that company has borrowed debt, right? Company has borrowed debt and company is borrowing more and more debt, right? So you will feel that this company is a riskier company, right? We have seen the case of Adani. And, you know, last month, Hindenburg has published a post, uh, report against Adani, just because uh, of which we have seen that there was a sudden fall in the value of Adani uh, shares. What was the reason? Because Hindenburg has said that Adani has taken lots of lo uh, loan and company don't have money to repay the loan, right? So that is the reason uh, if any company has borrowed loan, right? So you won't feel safe uh, into that company. Why? Because that company has borrowed already so much loan if bank will ask to repay the loan. And, and if company is not able to repay the loan, so what bank will do? Bank will sell the assets of Adani Limited and they will recover the money, right? Being a shareholder, you are carrying a risk. Why you are carrying a risk? Because if company uh, if company's assets are going to be sold by the bank, so you will lose your money, right? The money which you have invested into the company, you will lose your money, right? So what lots of people do, they believe in investing into unlevered company, where your company has not uh, borrowed any kind of debt, right? Now, what you will be doing, slowly, slowly, you will try to shift towards a company which is unlevered company. Why? Because this levered company carries risk. Are you able to understand? Now, what you have done, you have invested into this company, right? I'm taking an example that you have invested into a, a levered company, right? Just listen to me very carefully for five more minutes and then you will be able to understand everything. Now I'm making an assumption here, right? What I'm doing, I'm making an assumption here. You have to listen to me very carefully that you have invested into a daily limit, right? I'm making assumption.
you have invested into the shares into the shares of adani limited right you have invested into the shares of adani limited and if i talk about investment so you are holding 10% shares of adani limited right you are holding 10% shares of adani limited right now if you are holding 10% shares of adani limited so what is going to be the value of investment here value of equity is how much it is 1 lakh 30000 crore right it is 1 lakh 30000 crore and if you are holding 10% shares so what is going to be your investment amount your investment amount is going to be 10% of 1 lakh 30000 right so 10% of 1 lakh 30000 is going to be how much it is going to be 13000 rupees right now you know you are very tensed you are very tensed why you are very tensed because this company has borrowed huge debt and and company is continuously borrowing the debt right now what you are planning to do you are planning to disinvest your money from adani limited and whatever amount you will receive right, you will invest into infosys limited right this is your planning right because you are afraid because uh, just because uh, company is borrowing more and more debt right now see here if you will sell these shares how much you will be receiving you are holding 10% shares right you are holding 10% shares so when you will sell these shares so you will be getting 13000 rupees yes or no you will be getting 13000 rupees huh? now let's suppose what you have done you have sold these shares you have sold these shares in the market now how much you will be receiving you will be receiving 13000 rupees cash right you are having 13000 rupees cash by selling shares of adani limited right now what next assumption we will make here right you will buy the same proportion of shares in another company right you have you are having 10% shares of adani limited so now what you will be doing you will be buying 10% shares of infosys limited right what you will be doing you will be buying 10% shares of infosys limited now i am making second assumption right same proportion you have to use always right same proportion you have to use always right now here if you see uh, you are planning to buy the shares of infosys limited and now you want to buy 10% shares of infosys limited so how you will buy the 10% shares of infosys limited buy 10% shares of infosys limited so how you will buy the 10% shares of infosys limited because you are having 13000 rupees and now if you will see the value of firm so value of firm or you can say the value of equity because this company has not raised any debt right so the value of firm or value of equity is here 2 lakh rupees now if you want to buy 10% shares so you require 20000 rupees you require 20000 rupees right yes or no you require 20000 rupees to buy 10% shares of adani limited right now how much cash you are having first of all i will write down here buy 10% shares of infosys buy 10% shares of infosys right you require you require 20000 cash right how much cash you require you require 20000 cash but how much cash you are having right now you are having 13000 rupees cash so there is a shortage of cash right there is a shortage of cash now how you will fulfill this shortage of cash there is a shortage of 7000 rupees right again i am saying you have to use the same proportion right you have to use the same proportion now what is the debt value here which adani has uh, uh, issued in the market right the adani has issued debt securities in the market and what is the debt value debt value is 1 lakh rupees right now what you will be doing you will be buying 10% debt right so 10% of 1 lakh is going to be how much it is going to be 10000 right so what you will do here to buy the shares of infosys you will borrow a loan right how much loan you will be borrowing you will borrow a loan of you will borrow a loan of 10000 rupees right how much loan you will borrow you will borrow a loan of 10000 rupees right and how much is the available cash with you you just let me know how much is the available cash with you right you are having cash of 13000 rupees with you right available cash is how much available available cash you are having is 13000 rupees with you right so what to total cash you are having you are having total cash of 23000 rupees with you right now what you will be doing 
you will be buying 10% of shares, uh, 10% shares of Infosys Limited. So when you will acquire the 10% shares of Infosys Limited, so how much you have to pay to acquire the 10% shares of Infosys Limited? How much you have to pay? You have to pay 20,000 rupees, right? You have to pay 20,000 rupees. Now what balance cash you will be having with you? The balance cash, which you will be having with you is going to be 3,000 rupees. Balance cash is going to be with you. It is going to be 3,000 rupees, right? Now, now when you have acquired the shares of uh, Adani Limited, Anna, when you have acquired the shares of Adani Limited, what was your return, right? We have to understand this thing. When you have acquired the shares of Adani Limited, what was your return, right? If you see here, so what is the EBT here? EBT is 1,000, uh, 13,000 rupees, right? In this case, if you see, EBT is how much? EBT is 13,000. Now, if you are holding 10% shares, right? If you are holding 10% shares into the Adani Limited, so what is going to be your share of profit? What is going to be your share of profit in Adani? Share of profit in Adani. What is going to be your share of profit in Adani? It is going to be 10% of total profit, right? Because you are a shareholder and you were holding 10% shares. So your share of profit is going to be 10% of 13,000 rupees, right? So it is going to be how much? It is going to be 1,300 rupees. It is going to be 1,300 rupees. Your share of profit is going to be how much? It is going to be 10% of 13,000 rupees and it is 1,300 rupees, right? In case of Adani Limited. Now, what is going to be your share of profit in case of Infosys Limited? What is going to be your share of profit? Your share of profit is going to be in case of Infosys Limited. How much? It is going to be uh, EBT is 20,000 and you are holding 10% shares. So you will be eligible for 10% profit. So here, if I write down share of profit, so it is going to be how much? If you see here, 10% of 20,000. So it is going to be here, 2,000 rupees, right? Your share of profit is going to be how much? It is going to be 2,000 rupees. Right? But if you see here, to purchase the shares of Adani Limit, uh, Infosys Limited, you have borrowed a loan. How much loan you have borrowed? You have borrowed a loan of 10,000 rupees. Right here, you have borrowed a loan of 10,000 rupees. And what interest you have to pay for the loan of 10,000 rupees? You have to pay 7 interest, 7% 7 interest rate because prevailing interest rate is how much? It is 7%, right? Here we have seen that how much interest Adani is paying. Adani is paying interest of 7%. So same interest you have to pay, right? So you will be paying 7% interest on 10,000 rupees. So how much interest you have to pay? If I write down the interest amount here, so how much interest you have to pay? So interest amount is going to be 7% of 10,000 rupees. 7% of 10,000, which is going to be 700 rupees, right? Here your profit is going to be 2,000. I'm sorry, here I've written 20,000. And interest cost is going to be how much? 700. So what is going to be your net profit? Your net profit is going to be 1,300 rupees. Right, your net profit is going to be how much? It is going to be 1,300 rupees, right? Now you can see in both the cases, the profit is same. In both the cases, if you see, profit is same. And what is the reason why profit is same? Just because of arbitrage, right? There will be no change in the value of M. There will be no change in the value of M. And this is how Modgalani has proved this thing. Right. This is how Modgalani has proved uh, this thing. That what Modgalani says, let's suppose the person or the public which has invested into Adani Limited, right? Later on, what they will be doing, they will be shifting to uh, Infosys Limited. Why they will be shifting to uh, Infosys Limited? Because Infosys Limited is a unlevered firm, right? Infosys Limited is a unlevered firm and it does not carry any kind of risk, right? It does not carry outsider risk. Why it does not carry outsider risk? Because it, it don't have any debt. Uh, into their capital structure. But Adani is having that into their capital structure. There is some risk, right? So what public will be doing, they will be uh, shifting towards Infosys Limited, right? They will switch from Adani to Infosys Limited. And just because of this process, right? The value of firm will become equal later on, right? The value of firm will become later on. This is what a arbitrage process, right? Now, if you have invested into Infosys Limited, you are having balance cash of 3000 rupees, right? You were having 23,000 rupees cash, right? You were having 23,000 rupees cash, right? 
you have purchased 20000 shares of infosys limited right now what you can do you can invest this 3000 somewhere and you can generate more return right you can generate more return right so being an investor it's a wise decision for you why it is a wise decision for you because now you will be able to generate more return just because of arbitrage process and this is what arbitrage process is it clear to you all guys what i have tried to explain you are you able to understand what is arbitrage process now here you know what you have to do you have to remember some assumption and now what you have to do you have to remember some assumptions right now if let's suppose you are having 10% shares in the adani limited right if you are having 10% shares in the adani limited so what you will be doing when you will be switching your investment so you have to acquire same percentage of shares in another company right you have to acquire same percentage of shares in another company right so if you are borrowing debt right if you are borrowing debt to acquire shares into unlevered form so what do you have to do you have to borrow same proportion of that right that is going to be 10% of existing 